Good day, fellow Jersey nerds, and welcome to episode 81 of the Jersey Nerds podcast. I'm your host, Ryan, and today on the podcast, we're going to be looking at the 2019 Stanley Cup final between the St. Louis Blues and the Boston Bruins, and we're going to be looking at what games one and two in Boston would look alike in 10-year increments. We're also going to have fake or authentic on today's podcast, and it's the return of Throwback Throwdown with a little bit of a variation. Joining me for this journey into the 2019 Stanley Cup final are Sean and Beepo. Beepo, what's going on? Just recording a podcast, Ryan. How about you? Oh, just doing the same. Loving it. Uh, what do you think uh, of the Jersey matchup on both sides here for the 2019 final? Were you asking me a question? My audio cut out for a second. <laughs> 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 it honestly just went dead silent for half a second. Oh, God. What do you think of the Jersey matchup for the 2019 final? Definitely one of the better ones from the options that we could have had, at least uh, going into the conference final. That's for sure. Probably actually the best one out of the uh, out of the possibility from the conference finals. It's, it's pretty classic, and we're going to go over each team's changes and how they pretty much got back to... Uh, a very classic looking final. Uh, Sean, same question to you. Thoughts on uh, this year's final jerseys? Well, Ryan, let me tell you, I'm kind of sick of these Boston jerseys, but I'm kind of sick of those pesky Bruins, despite the fact that I picked them getting to the cup final. But I'm a big fan of St. Louis, let me tell you. I can't see that away jersey. It's just beautiful. I can't believe you picked Boston to get to the final there, Don. I, uh, you know, back in 1974, I told Terry O'Reilly, I said, Terry, listen, that's Bobby Orkitz going far. And you know what he did? He went right to Chicago and blew his knee up. See, oh, uh, your, you, you, your impression, well, and good. He didn't pronounce Bobby Orr's name wrong. Well, Bobby R said this the other day. I told him, I said, damn, Russian kids coming into the league. It's all I say, but they're not as bad as the Swiss kids. They get it in, Scott. They get it in. <laughs> I think uh, Bobby Orr might be the only name that Don doesn't mess up. I think he could do Brad Park. Brad Park. Anybody, I guess anybody who played on the Bruins in the early 70s, he's got it. A couple of weeks ago during uh, one of the Boston and uh, Blue Jackets games, I actually got to hear him mispronounce the name live or quote unquote live. I, it was like a minute behind on a stream, but I was so happy that he pronounced uh, Landikoff that way. Landikoff. <laughs> he pronounced it as Landikoff. Eh, <laughs> close enough. <laughs> That's what I said. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's I'm convinced. Not very good at as, at, uh, How much time we got left, Ron? That's not enough, so we're gonna skip that. But watch this here, boy. Watch <laughs> this here, kid. Good to tell you this right now. That Doug Gilmore kid's got a lot of spirit, and I hope the New Jersey keeps him around. He's only thirty-five. He's a good guy to keep around. I tell you what, there, bye. Good guy, Dougie Gilmore. Thumbs up. Thumbs up for me. He's from Kingston. <laughs> a good local boy like Nick Antropov. <laughs> yeah, and Antropov's a local boy. Local as if, if we're talking about Kazakhstan. No problem there. Whatever. Uh, let's get into what we did this week. I wish I had a story, but I'm actually in the process of moving. And my last two or three weeks have just been, they've been hell pretty much. Like I, I'm living in my house, but I don't feel like it's my house anymore. It's been staged for people to come in and view. So all my stuff is like boxed up and put away and I barely have anything of my own out anymore. So uh, my week's been crazy. Sean, what about you? What have you been up to? Well, Ryan, let me tell you, I've been doing a lot. I've been working. And when you're an assistant manager somewhere, you work a lot. The one thing you do when you work as hard as I do is you wear your shoes out eventually. So today I buckled down and adulted up, I guess, is what the kids are calling it. And I got myself some new work boots. Now, I love Mondays because you're back on the job site. No more nagging life. And uh, (laughs) part of that is that, um, you know, you go into Mark's work warehouse and they got all these work boots. And I don't know if you're like me, Ryan, but when I get into the, uh, the work boots section, I'm like a kid in a candy store. In the work boots section? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm not necessarily like you, but I, I can relate uh, in a sense because I'm like that at Staples in the notepad section. But go on about the work boots. 
Oh yeah. So you know, when you when you get to the work supply section and you start thinking to yourself, man, I could do all. I what could I use this for? And you start looking at like the grounded shoes, you know, the kind that it's like if you step on a live wire, it won't kill you, <laughs> type thing. Like the high sided Arctic boots, and you're like, man, I want to step into work. And you know, you realize you're going to look like a jackass if you buy them for work. But you're still in your head. You're just thinking like, you're still stuck in that thing where you're sitting there and you're thinking. You're going to walk into work and the guy's going to go, wow, he's got the, he's got the <laughs> exciting 50 shoes. I hear they're good. That's real leather, you know. There he I goes. I hear that's, oh, that's OSHA approved <laughs> in night. It'd be like the hockey helmets with the CSA approved sticker on the back that tells you they're super safe and everything's fine. Oh, exactly. <laughs> like, I, it's that weird sort of mind. And you know that's not the case. It's all in your head. Oh, yeah. But it's like getting a nice pair. And thanks to the whole buyback program at work, I ended up only paying, let's see, what's 75 miles? Like 25 bucks for them. Oh, that's pretty good. Everyone knows when you show up to work in new shoes because everyone's been working hard on their shoes. Like they do a hard day's work and shoes are going to get beat up. And when you show up with flashy, bright, clean work shoes, you stick out like a sore thumb. Did I tell you what happened to my old shoes? No, please. I put a, so for those of you that don't know, um, if in Canada, maybe in the U.S., every summer, once summer actually starts, uh, grocery stores and department stores like to set up, well, not department stores, like big box stores like Walmart and Home Depot, and we have a chain out here called Kent. And where I work, which is a grocery store, um, we get, uh, we start up garden centers. They're places, they're like miniature greenhouses and we sell pots and soils and all of that. And so I'm the assistant manager of a garden center. Uh, and in the process of a month, these shoes that were kind of ratty, I put a fence, uh, pole through, uh, through the lining above the, um, the steel toe. <laughs> Brushed one of them with a pallet. There's a lot of physical labor out there. Uh, I ripped the entire matting off of the top of one of them. Uh, and by the end of it, I had put a hole through both soles. And uh, the bottom actual rubber sole part, not the shoe sole, but the rubber grip part, like the tarantula grip stuff, had peeled off the bottom of the front of one of the shoes. And they were so waterlogged, they wouldn't dry out. So today I had to throw them out. I got a year's work out of them, and it was a work. You know, I'm I'm out there working. You know, forty hours a week. Or, you know, there's you know, it's like a full time job. There's something very satisfying about work working your way through a pair of work shoes, and just work like you feel like you've worked extra hard when you destroy a pair of work shoes. Like, like you should bring them to your boss and go, look how hard I'm working. They always make it hard for you to get your money back, though. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. They always, they always like fill out this form, do this, do that. Oh well, you know you haven't, and then it's like, oh no, no, no. I got my receipt. That's all I need. Because the old store I used to work for, for some reason, all the jobs I've had in a short time of being employable, so like six years, seven years, I have worked at grocery stores. <laughs> <laughs> I used to work as a as a chef, and in the kitchen one time we had a guy, and he he left. I think he got sick, but no one believed him. Anyways, he left his shoes behind, and that night after work we all got really drunk, and then we grilled his shoes, and that was fun. Um, that's that's the end of my story. But grilled shoes, that's especially when you're drunk after work, that's pretty fun. Sounds People- like uh, when you're playing hockey and you stick a teammate's uh, clothes in the shower. Oh, that's classic, too. Instead, you're just grilling a guy's shoes. I can one-up that with the spicy keys. What? What? With the what? Spicy keys. I don't know what that is, but I, I want to hear it. Yeah, what is that? I've never done it personally, but I know a guy who did it. And what you do is you have to, you have to make sure that everybody's keys are all metal. So this is much easier back in the day. Uh, and what you do is, is you put the keys in the oven. <laughs> Just at the lowest setting, right? <laughs> so to and keep it safe. Go, oh, where are my keys? Where are my keys? You throw it to them. 
Oh, no. They catch it. Ah, 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 ah. Oh, you got me with the old spicy keys. Who, who has that kind of time to put that kind of plan together? I don't know, but I want to try it out. But the problem is, is nowadays all the keys are like plastic coated. Yeah. So you'll just, and, they, and they got batteries in them. <laughs> Dude, so you melted well, my car key. You melted my car keys. Back in the day, it was funny. But now it's like, <laughs> oh, man, you owe me like 200 bucks. It's like, nah. Plus, it's totally not weird that you're throwing your my keys at me with a pair of tongs. Just just grill the car keys or stick the car keys in the shower. <laughs> I think you're. I don't think you're getting the idea of it here, Beepo. <laughs> ah, got you. Your keys are in the shower, sucker. <laughs> uh, anyways, we're going to be looking at the Stanley Cup final in ten year increments. So uh, we got some years to get to. Let's get at it. As we mentioned, and as you probably all know, Boston Bruins, St. Louis Blues, 2019 Stanley Cup Final. Games 1 and 2 are going to be in Boston, so we want to look at what games 1 and 2 would look like in 10-year increments. So we're going to start with 2019. We're going to cover 09, 99, 89, 79, and 1969, and maybe a little bonus, uh, little bonus Stanley Cup Final there from 1935. That never actually happened, but maybe we'll uh, we'll dabble in the 30s. But let's start with this year, 2019. We touched on it a bit off the top. Uh, this is a classic-looking series. We got Boston in their black jersey and St. Louis in their white jersey. And you can follow along with all these images on HockeyJerseyConcepts.com or just click the link uh, that's in the episode description. So let's talk about this year's jerseys, uh, what's good and what's bad, Sean. All right, so my biggest problem with this year is... Hang on, sorry, my recording motion's down. There we go. Okay, we're good, we're good. Uh, so my biggest problem with this year is Boston. I'm tired of these jerseys. I want something closer to what we'll see as we go back in time. But they're, they're fine, they're passable, but at this point we're getting close to, you know, in a couple of years it'll be 15 years Boston's been wearing these jerseys, and they're fine but I'm kind of tired of them. St. Louis is a totally different story. I don't really think St. Louis has ever had a bad jersey in their history, uh, but these are probably some of their better ones. They finally perfected that double blue type thing they were going for in the 90s, uh, early 2000s. And, yeah, their white jersey is probably my third favorite in the NHL, behind Winnipeg's, obviously. And, uh, you know, the one thing I might have liked to have seen was their Heritage jersey as their home jersey for the playoffs. It would have been kind of neat to see that against the Bruins set. Yeah, definitely would have. It looks like that's what we got in the regular season. But uh, what I like about this year's jerseys is that uh, be, just because I'm a traditionalist, I love how classic this looks. And I love that you could pretty much take these jerseys um, and apply them to back in 1969 or 1967 even when the Blues first entered the league, and it still would be it, it would be um, imaginable that, that, that this could take place in 69, and I still like that these jerseys are applicable to today. So um, I just really, really like these jerseys, and I, I'm, I know Sean's uh, tiring on this, this Boston set, but I'm okay with this Boston set. I'm... I'm not tiring on it. They can keep them for another 15 years for all I'm concerned. When when you have your jerseys right, I don't ever see a need to change, much like uh, Montreal doesn't change their jerseys. Chicago doesn't change their jerseys. So uh, I'm all on board with this. I think this is one of the best-looking finals we've had in a long time, and uh, definitely since 2015 when Boston and Chicago played. So, Beepo, your thoughts on uh, 2019? I know. Yeah, sorry, go ahead, John. That was 2013. 2013, okay. part of, I was also part of it. I going to make that correction. I wasn't sure if you meant 2015 with Tampa and Chicago, because that was also a really nice final. Uh, no. I'm, not, I'm not a good Jersey nerd. I mixed up my years. Sorry, guys. <laughs> yeah, no, but do I like, do you, don't give Ryan hope. If he sees a blue and white team in the cup, finally, might mistake it for the Maple Leafs. <laughs> I watched every game that year, and I never got on until the end. <laughs> Ryan, for your terrible nerdishness, you are banished, hereby banished from the podcast. 
All right. See you guys later. Have a good night. I'm out. All right. Ryan. See you later, Ryan. <laughs> so, Sean, back to talking about the Eternity, right? It's the Sean and Beepo show. <laughs> All right. Go ahead uh, with 2019, anyway. Beepo. I have to 100% agree with you, Ryan, that I love how classic this matchup looks. Uh, and I also kind of uh, tend to be a bit of a traditionalist. I love seeing a modern design when it works, but I, at least in my concepts, too, I tend to all with design it more traditionally. Um, I do also kind of agree with Sean that I'm sort of tiring of these Bruins jerseys. They're still nice either way, but it just feels like it, they need something fresh. Honestly, I think if they just swapped the colors on their logo around like they did in some of the other jerseys we're going to be talking about, or, well, actually only one of the other jerseys we're going to be talking about because only one of the other ones are black, aside from the one that looks almost exactly the same as this one. Um if they just did that, I think I think it would honestly go a long ways. Um, and the only issues I really have with St. Louis' jersey is tiny, tiny consistency things with the striping on the hems and arms and the yoke. That it just needs that. It's just so. There's like a tiny white stripe in between the stripes on the hem and arms, but not on the yoke. And if they just fix that little thing, I think that would make it so much better. But either way, I think those are just tiny nitpicks, and it's a beautiful matchup. Okay, so we uh, hop in the DeLorean with Doc and Marty, and we go back 10 years to the 2009, to 2009, not the 2009. It's not like 2009 was some super memorable year and should be referred to as the 2009, but 2000. I, I think 2009 was a pretty memorable year. I like the cup. I like the actual cup final that year. That was pretty memorable. 2009. Think? Who was, what was the actual cup? Oh, Pittsburgh and, was that, no. Was that Pittsburgh, Detroit? Yeah, it was the rematch when the Pens won and the Red Wings started sucking. Nah, not not so good. Pittsburgh had their edge jerseys. Not so good. But, you I, know, it doesn't really matter because if you just look at the logo on the front and who was raising the cup, you know, I'm okay with that. <laughs> and that makes everything okay. Well, if, uh, if St. Louis played Boston in 2009, games one and two in Boston, this would be another Reebok edge series. Boston pretty much has the same jerseys. And St. Louis had their Reebok Edge jerseys. And these St. Louis's jerseys were one of those jerseys where we waited so long for them to change them. And finally they changed them. And I don't know if they changed them because of public outcry or just because ownership felt they were getting old. But this, uh, this very much was a Reebok Edge series. And St. Louis held up their end of the bargain in that regards. Uh, no waist stripes. We have piping. We have oversized shoulder yokes. We have curved, kind of pointed half outline of these shoulder yokes. It's just an absolute mess. Um, Sean, what your thoughts on the two pot? What would have been the 2009 final? Okay, those St. Louis jerseys, what can you say? They're peak 2009, but they're a good peak 2009. Of the edge template jerseys, I think we all have to admit these were pretty okay. Uh, you know, things like the Batman piping look terrible, but the axe, uh, you know, the axe blade shaped yokes weren't bad. Nashville would do it better, but you know, I don't really hold that against them. Again, they've aged, they've aged quite a lot, but they're not bad. And you know, the team played pretty well in them. So I think they should be fondly remembered. Boston looks literally the exact same. So, you know, Why? you might watch. What makes this Batman piping? I don't understand that reference. Oh, they're just it's just called Batman piping because it Batman was the guy who was the commissioner, obviously. I mean, we're only going back to nine. <laughs> so and he was the one at the time it was called Batman piping or the Batman apron. Just find something to blame on Batman. Well, exactly. I mean, TC is not here to really lay into the guy, but at the time I remember it being called like the Batman piping or Batman apron. And what that is for those of you boys and girls at home who don't remember the edge era, what you do ought to remember is they had the piping going down from the collar all the way down to the bottom of the jersey. It kind of looked like a chef's apron, you know, and I told, uh, I told, uh, I told Johnny Buse in 1972, I said, listen up there, Johnny. You know, when you're baking, you don't want no piping on the front of your jersey. And that's the year we won the cup. So, you yeah, know, it worked out well. Yeah, edge piping seems like something Don would get mad at. No. Don't down for it. You look like a bunch of jerks. 
<laughs> and I don't like it, St. Louis. You're terrible. You stole Montreal's goalie, and in a couple of years, it's really going to come back and bite you. That Gary Price kid doesn't know what he's in for. I'll tell you what. <laughs> All right, as far as 2009, Boston does a good job holding up their end of the bargain, even though I know people really enjoy Boston wearing gold socks with their black jerseys, but I like it the way it is now, black socks with the black jerseys. I, it was like, I know it was a tradition thing in Boston, but just that I never enjoyed the gold socks with the black jerseys. But St. Louis here, this is just an edge creation, and that's what it's going to be known for. People down the road are going to say, why does St. Louis look like that? And the reasoning behind it is going to be because it was the edge era. Reebok made them do it. And that's what it's, uh, That's what this year would make me think of. Reebok made St. Louis do it. Uh, Beepo, your thoughts on what a 2009 final would look like? Well, I've basically already given my thoughts on the Boston jersey considering that the Adidas one is not very different. But every change that was made from Reebok to Adidas was an improvement. So therefore, going from Adidas to Reebok, every change uh, is a downgrade. Like the double outlined numbers and name, that just muddies it all up. The yellow socks, I got to agree with Ryan, I think it looks much better in black. The yellow ones might not be as bad if the striping was the same, but we never got to see that. Um, So right now, I'm just going to say the black is better. Um, And yeah, everything else that I've said about Boston jerseys is exactly the same really aside from jersey cut um for st louis i don't these jerseys i i agree with sean that they're edge but they're good edge i mean they're not the greatest for sure but if you add some hemistripes onto this thing and if you switch the navy blue and the lighter blue on the arms i think you've got a really solid jersey there and basically as good as nashville the last edge ones were it's not the greatest, but it could be much worse. And either way, both teams downgraded going from 2019 to 2009. Uh, but overall, it's not too, too far away from what we have now. All right, let's move to 1999. This one's very interesting. Boston's got their very 90s jerseys with the full sleeve stripe here. Uh, and St. Louis has their, they finally made the uh, turn to a more classic look. Uh, This was them coming out of the 90s with a classic look, uh, very much uh, similar to the blue jersey they wear now. Remember, in 99, the home team was wearing white. So let's look at uh, Boston's jerseys in 99 and St. Louis's jerseys in 99. Sean, what's good and bad about this year? All right, so these jerseys I'm very familiar with because the teams would wear the exact same thing straight through to the end of the edge here. So this could be any year. From, I think it would be 98 to 2007. They're very familiar with these. And, um, you know, the thing about them is that they both have their positives and negatives. For me, the Boston jerseys themselves weren't bad, but my goodness, the editing they did to the logo in 0708, I didn't realize how necessary it was until I saw them back to back. And I'm like, oh, wow, that did so noticeable. Uh, you know, I'm not a big fan of the Pooh Bear shoulder patch, but I feel like it's an easy fix, really. The striping wasn't bad, and the white jerseys I thought were a little better than the black jerseys. As for St. Louis, uh, you know, these jerseys didn't age well in two regards. I wasn't really a big fan of how angled everything was on it. I feel like it wasn't as natural as the current jerseys. But more importantly, one thing to remember about these, for those of you that don't remember, metallic material was a thing in the NHL in this time period, and St. Louis used a lot of it on this jersey. I think almost all of the dark blue on this jersey was that weird metallic thing. Or no, sorry, it would be the lighter blue on the white. No, wait, they're wearing their blues. Fuck, <laughs> never mind. Um, it, yeah. it, the material, a lot of people call it sheen. It was sheen. Exactly what it is. And Estevez? Or... <laughs> He's wore it really well. Pittsburgh did it well. Nashville did it well. Uh, I'm sure other teams did it well. Uh, I think that Toronto and Atlanta used it on the inside of their pits, but the team that I think really didn't use it well and really aged themselves because of it was St. Louis because the jersey was so good without it, and then they added it to it, and it just it dates it really poorly. And I don't think you really needed it in this look. And the fact of the matter is that if you wore it, even at the time it looked kind of dated because the material itself, once it gets dirty, it shows dirt really easily. It scratches easily. 
And it, honestly, if you want to buy one of these jerseys from that era, it's difficult to find one that isn't full of poles, kind of like an Edge 1.0 jersey. Yeah, that sheen material did pull, did pull very easily. I was always thrilled with this St. Louis jersey. This was they. This was kind of bringing in. It was like the start of bringing in retro. I mean, St. Louis went to these jerseys, and they were supposed to be kind of inspired by their original look. And then you got Minnesota kind of jumping on the faux back bandwagon, and that got the ball rolling into retro being cool again. Um, but you reminded me, Sean, about the sheen material. Yes, these did age poorly because of that. And looking at some images, just good thing the numbers were yellow because the yellow has really been minimized on this jersey. Um, but I do remember it fondly, uh, thinking back on it without having to thoroughly review some images. I do... I think of this jersey fondly so i can't give it uh too low of a rating but boston it's not a bad jersey but it's like the black sheep of their jersey history uh it just seems like a change for no good reason other than it was the 90s and everything was changing in the 90s so let's change boston's jerseys as well and they just ne- wow it just never sat <clears throat> pardon me they never sat well with me so um this isn't a tremendous looking year, but uh, just as St. Louis didn't uh, keep up their, their end of the bargain in what would have been a 2009 final, Boston isn't keeping up their end of the bargain in a 1999 final. Beepo. Yeah, I have to agree. I'm pretty sure I've gone off on these Boston jerseys on the podcast before, but I'll do a little bit of a uh, shorter version here. I, I absolutely hate these jerseys. They've, looked, they've always looked so dated to me. I hate that logo. Uh, well, I mean, I hate what they did to the logo. Anyways, it, it just looks so dated. I mean, the logo, the base of itself is nice. Um, but these jerseys have just always looked so minor league to me. I've always associated them with the youth teams that I've played against and that I've seen playing whenever I go to the rink to play my own games or practices. I've always associated with that. It associated this template with that. And it just it doesn't look like it belongs in the NHL to me. And it's just it makes a lot of sense for the nineties considering a lot of the jerseys that came out then. The blues also they're they're those ones are much nicer. Um I think they need some more yellow as Ryan mentioned with the uh numbers being yellow, that definitely saves it a lot. Um but other than that it's a very nice uh simple design. Has that little bit of an essence of the nineties with the curved arm stripes, which I think adds to it in this case. Um, not, I don't think they'd work as well today, which they don't use it today, which is good. Um, but other than, just add some yellow, and this thing is a really nice jersey and really nice looking for the 90s. And, yeah, the Bruins just don't hold up their end here, even if the Blues do. All right, let's move on to 1989. And, oh, this this look has such a, a sweet spot in my heart. I have such fond memories of jerseys of the 80s, good and bad. This is This is... Late 80s is my childhood, early 90s. So this is just, you know, six-year-old innocent me loving hockey and everything is so great about, about this. This was the blues famous era where they would use that kind of vinyl or screen printed uh, numbers and logos on their jerseys. They had very mesh-like jerseys. It would be very cheap nowadays. Uh, And Boston with their Ray Bork era jerseys. Again, Boston would be in white here. St. Louis in blue. Um, Very nostalgic here for me. So I'm going to be very positive on this. But, Sean, what are your thoughts on uh, a potential 89-looking final? I am also very positive on this. Uh, These Blues jerseys are probably my favorite they've ever worn. I want to throw back to these. And I think the Blues really benefited from that pale red color when it was used in small amounts in their color scheme. I think it looks fantastic, albeit a little dated. And maybe the one thing that would have been nice is to take that, uh, what do you call it, the trumpet logo and stick that on the shoulder of these and you got the perfect blues jerseys as far as I'm concerned. And you have the perfect Bruins jerseys. These are my favorite Bruins jerseys. Maybe the black one I prefer, I don't know, but the white one's just as good. They're beautiful they're simple. The team had likable players back then. I know, imagine that. And uh, the shoulder patch itself has kind of grown on me. The weird, furry, uh, fuzzy, liney bear. The crack bear? <laughs> yeah, the crack bear. I like the crack bear. It's tough between this one and another one we'll get to because they're very similar. 
uh, and it's little details that sell it for me. But yeah, gorgeous cup final. Both teams should bring these jerseys back for as throwback night jerseys. And yeah, you know what? I have no complaints. This bear was so overcomplicated for for no good reason, and he doesn't look he doesn't look menacing. He doesn't look happy. He almost looks confused a little bit here. But yeah, these Boston jerseys um, for the era that they were in, they, they they are the perfect Bruins jerseys considering the time frame that they were used. That's fine. Like they stayed there welcome. They left at the appropriate time. They were absolutely perfect. I don't need them to come back, uh, you know, aside from a couple retro nights or whatever, but they, they were just absolutely perfect. And St. Louis's jerseys, they were so 80s, but this is what I remember St. Louis wearing. I remember the Norris division and they played the Leafs so many times in the playoffs wearing these jerseys and the the stripes were so big but watching them on the play when watching the players play wearing them they didn't seem overly big like they seemed appropriately big so and just the whole vinyl kind of screen printing logo logoing and numbering was just so so era appropriate i mean it's it's there's probably nothing good about them technically speaking but just lots of fond memories, and I can't really say anything bad about this era of jerseys. Uh, Beepo, your thoughts on 1989? I don't think I'm as fond of this as you guys are, but I still absolutely, I absolutely love those Bruins jerseys. These are also my favorite Bruins jerseys of all time. This is the black counterpart, and I, unlike Ryan, I would honestly love to see these make a comeback to their full time uniforms today if they don't, uh, if they didn't come up with something new. Um, I just I love these things. I think they're that they don't look too dated. They look it's not like something again you could bring back today and it would look just fine. It's consistent. I don't really know what else to say about it. Honestly, it's just it's really nice. Uh, the Blues, on the other hand, also have a really nice jersey. I'm not sure how I feel about the red. I mean, it works, but I don't I don't necessarily think they need it in the in this uh, design. I, I don't love it as much as you guys do. So that doesn't necessarily bring it down for me, but it doesn't really make it any better. And it's just a nice, simple, classic look. And, I, again, there's not too much more to say about it on the blues end. And I don't know if we're necessarily ranking these yet, but I'd probably put this one at my number three spot. It's nice, but it doesn't have that extra oomph to really make me love it. All right, let's jump back even further. Now we're looking at 1979 kind of a transition era in the NHL and in the world in general. It's coming to the end of the decade here. So we have Boston pretty much in the same jerseys here. They just have a, a different numbering style, a more um, thicker kind of block font. St. Louis here uh, still working kind of on their original look uh, without any kind of shoulder yoke design here. But Sean, 1979, we kind of already covered the Bruins, but just your thoughts on this looking year. Okay, so in 1979, I think that what you have is the Blues have darkened that blue to more close to what they would use today on their home and road and stuff like that. Uh, and I really like this shade of blue. I like it better than the pale blue that they had before. And, uh, you know, it's, 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 it, we know what the design looks like. Uh, I do think it translates well today. It looks good at the time. The Bruins jerseys, the biggest difference in selling point for me is the black uh, arm ah, fuck, cuffs. Cuffs are larger on these jersey templates because we're going back to the point where they would have been sweaters for some teams. Yeah. We didn't quite have cash, but we were past like full wool sweaters. So we had that weird sort of halfway point. And the way that they did the black cuffs back then – I like it a lot more, but it balances out because the font's worse. So big, thick black cuffs on this jersey look a lot better and add a lot of color to it, so I'm happy with it. Uh, and the other thing I think that's weird is that stupid white stripe on the side of the Bruins' pants. Whose dumb idea was that? Like, it looks like it, it just takes away from it. I could understand yellow, but it looks so much better as a plain black shell. It's minor, but hey, you know what? Noticeable. I think I think that maybe just comes from that was the stock style of pants back in back in the late seventies. So that's maybe just what you used. But 
Uh, I've already mentioned my, my love for this Bruins jersey and how it stayed the appropriate amount of time. This Blues jersey is a really great jersey, except it's forgotten because the one before it with the shoulder design was better than it. So, But everything here, the color looks fantastic. This old Blues logo is fantastic. Again, big yellow stripes on the arm and the sleeve, but they're very appropriate. Uh, I find the color is balanced very well. This is a really, really great jersey. And this 1979-looking uh, matchup just really would have worked. It would work even now. Uh, it's just a lot of positives here, again, to say this is a really clean, classic-looking uh, matchup uh, that, again, would work in this day and age. Beepo, your thoughts? I might be jumping the gun by saying this, but this one is definitely my favorite matchup out of all of them. I've already talked about how much I like this Bruins jersey, and while I think that the uh, the 1989 version is better, this one isn't very far off. The white pants and the uh, six font, I don't particularly like them on this version. I like the I like the 1989 version better, but it's honestly kind of small potatoes at this point. But the Blues jersey, I absolutely love that one. I disagree with Ryan, and I think this one's much better than the version with the yoke because I've noticed that I tend to like these jerseys without a yoke a lot of times because I think the yokes that are added just make it too busy a lot of times. I think it's often very unnecessary, kind of like some of the blue white jerseys that we're going to be talking about. And I think that adding a yoke here would just make it too much, too busy. I think this is the perfect balance of not too busy or too of plainness and busyness basically and i think it works perfectly it's a nice simple three color scheme blue white and red or blue white and yellow sorry i'm thinking of the other red uh that the blues had and it's just simple stripes it's just a lot of color you guys know i love that it's just beautiful i love it all right and let's go back to our final year of this series 1969, it's the same looking final that we saw in 1970. We have the Bruins, I guess you'd call them the Bobby Orr era jerseys. Uh, we, the Bruins would have been wearing black at home here, so this has the yellow shoulder yokes. It's pretty much what the current jersey is based on. The blue, uh, sorry, pardon me, the Bruins also were using a uh, tie down neck at the time. St. Louis is using a white jersey with their classic logo. Uh, and we got simple striping on the arms and hems, but the cool feature here for me, as I mentioned, is the shoulder yoke striping, uh, which could be complicated, but actually really works for the blues and is really classic and wouldn't mind seeing it uh, come back in some form here. But Sean, let's start with you. 1969, your thoughts on this look. All right. Uh have to admit, not a big, huge, super fan of the blues jerseys or the Bruins really. I just think I've seen too much of these. And I know what you're thinking. Well, you weren't alive in 1969. What do you mean? CCM Vintage Program. You know, you see these jerseys at almost every hockey store, especially the Bruins one. They're nice, but I'm overexposed to them. Uh, And, you know, again, it is the photo from when Bobby Orr scored that really amazing goal. And they're nice, but they're just not my favorite. You know, I respect them. And they're historic, and they're really nice. And I think that if you are... A fan of these, you really got one. That being said, they're just not my favorite. All right. Uh, as for me, this is um, a classic-looking Bruins look, but an, a, an average classic-looking Bruins look. It, it, it's not bad, but it's not over the top. So it's just it's just there. It's almost like a placeholder. It's probably not a probably not something that you want it to be. But for me, it's just a placeholder. I'm sure... Bobby Orr fans are, are, would love this jersey, right? Just like uh, I'm a Gretzky fan, so I love the Gretzky jerseys, and that that's uh, to be expected. The Blues jersey I mentioned, this is fantastic. I would love to get my hands on some form of this Blues jersey. I just think the striping uh, could be really complicated, but it's actually pretty simple, and everything is just working so well here, especially with the colors. Just love this Blues jersey from 1969. Beepo, what are your thoughts? I also absolutely love this Bruins jersey, and I still think that I like the later version better without the yoke, 
But I don't, unlike what I just kind of said, I don't think the yoke really takes away from this one. And I completely understand why people like this one better. And the more I look at it, the more that I actually like it and almost like it better. I think, though, the yoke on this one is perfect because it, with the thickness of the arm and hem stripes, it really balances it out. If you had this kind of yoke on the, like, 1989 version with the thicker stripes on the arm and hem, it would not work. It works perfectly here. As I mentioned way earlier, I love the inverted logo here. I think it's perfect, and I really think the Bruins should bring that back today. The Blues, on the other hand, I think the yoke may be a little bit too much. I think that they could probably, the, I mean, the striping they have isn't necessarily too complex, but you still got blue, yellow, blue, yellow, blue in this, in each and every stripe. That's still a good amount of stripes, even if some of them are thin. So I think just a plain blue yoke would fit this thing much better. Maybe even just leave it plain white, but probably keep it plain blue. And I think it would look much better that way. I do like that they kept the yoke stripes consistent at the very least. So you got that going for it. It's still a really nice jersey. And at this point, look, really d diving deep into this, I, I'm kind of rethinking the rankings that I was giving these in my head earlier. This oh. one might take my number three spot. All right. And, um, well, quickly, uh, there's a little bonus one here. If Boston played St. Louis in 1935, it would have been the Bruins versus the Eagles. It would have been a problem because both teams actually only had white jerseys. At the time, uh, the Eagles were wearing a really simple jersey. It might as well be Tampa Bay's current jersey with the red Eagle logo on the front, St. Louis arched above it. Boston was wearing something similar to what they wore in the 2019 Winter Classic with the B logo on the front. We had the shoulders and the classic striping on the waist and the arms. Uh, just quickly, looking at 1935, even though it would have been a logistical nightmare, uh, Sean... Any fond thoughts of either of these jerseys? I love the Bruins Winter Classic jersey from this year, so it's basically the same jersey but with black, which is fine. Give that a whirl. St. Louis, uh, you know, I'm actually a big fan of the St. Louis Eagles jerseys, I will say. Uh, but I would love to see a blue version, to be honest with you. Uh, and I think that if you're going to go for that type of thing, I'd love to see an inverse Detroit where the arms actually stay white and the jersey's blue, I think that fit with the time period. But yeah, logistical nightmare, because the reason why the St. Louis Eagles failed, despite decent crowds, was because of logistics, namely because the plane hadn't really been perfected yet. And tr taking a train from, like, New England and the GTA and Montreal to St. Louis wasn't easy. Yeah, St. Louis jerseys, I mean, they're fun these St. Louis Eagles jerseys, they're fun to look back on, but they're certainly not spectacular in any way. Uh, I don't even need a vintage version to come out. This Boston jersey, uh, it's great, but I'm fine with the one that the Bruins wore for the 2019 Winter Classic. So um, it would win, hands down. It's not even a competition here. Beepo, your thoughts on this little bonus 1935 Stanley Cup? Just like you guys, I love the Bruins jersey. It's very similar to that Winter Classic jersey, and the striping is just so consistent throughout. The logo and the numbers are just, they stand out perfectly, and it's very fitting for the time. It definitely wouldn't work full-time today, but as we saw with the Winter Classic, it would work perfectly for a one-off or a couple games, and it's just beautiful. And that Eagles one, I, I don't know why, but there's something that I really love about this jersey, and it, maybe it's just because it's so fitting for the time period, it, and that is so simple, but I love the striping on it, and I love how the logo and the number are a completely different color. But it works perfectly, if you ask me. Back around 2017 or like late 2016, whenever the Blues were set to match up in the 2017 Winter Classic, I remember I made a concept for them uh, wearing white, and I basically just copied this jersey. I had the current blue, um, the blue note in red on the front, plain red number on the back and you know plain red name and then obviously the modern adaptations of red tv numbers and everything else is exactly the same as this jersey i still would love to see them bring that back i don't know why i like this jersey so much but i love this eagles jersey it just has that vintage flair i guess to it that i like so much okay let's look at our worst years and we're, we'll stick with the 10-year increments that we uh that we originally went with here and we'll exclude this 1935 bonus image but looking at 2019 09 99 89 79 or 69 sean what's the worst looking year to you for me i'm going to give it 
2009 simply because I'm not a fan of either of these jerseys particularly and they don't have the same classic appeal as something like 69 might have despite the fact that quality wise I think the jerseys are about the same and I'm going to go 10 years later than that or 10 years before that and say 1999 and it's the Bruins uh, it's the Bruins jersey that just it, it's bad <laughs> it's a bad jersey uh, I don't like it, and it, there's just nothing appealing about the 1999 matchup. Beepo, your least favorite. I'm going to agree with you, Ryan, here and say 1999. And, I mean, looking at the matchups, my two uh, quote-unquote finalists for worst matchup would have been 99 and 2009. And it's mainly just because the Bruins have the bad jersey in 99 and the Blues do in 2009. And as you've heard in my reviews, I don't hate that Blues jersey, but I hate that Bruins jersey which brings it down for me, and that's why 1999 is my least favorite. All right, opposite end of the spectrum now, the best looking of the ones we looked at, Sean. It's a toss-up between 89 and 79. I think we're going to find that with everyone here. Maybe we'll find it for this year. I don't know. I'm going to give it to 79 again because of the Black Cups. And I'm going to actually go with this year, 2019. I think uh, everything looks really well put together. And actually, if you look at 69, 79, so on, it kind of builds to this year. And I think everything's just tidied up and put into a nice, perfect, neat package. So I'm choosing this year, 2019, as the best-looking year. Beepo. I think I'm going to go 1979 on this one, as I mentioned before. I mean, as I'm looking back at it, it's kind of tough to choose between that one, uh, 69. Uh, That one's really growing on me the more I look at it in this year because those are all some solid matchups. But just the beautiful Bruins jersey and just that beautiful Blues jersey of 79 just can't seem to beat any of the other matchups for me. So I'm going to go 79. All right, two for 1979, and I went with 2019. Uh, Worst-looking year, two for 1999. And Sean went with 2009, so we're all over the map, and it seems like uh, 1969 and 1989 kind of just fall into the middle there, which is perfectly fine. Again, if you want to look at all these images, you can find them uh, in the link in the episode description or just head on over to HockeyJerseyConcepts.com. It is now time for Fake or Authentic. Fake or Faker Authentic, this is the game we play on the podcast where I give a statement and it's up to the co-host to determine whether or not it is fake or authentic, just like the jerseys you see around NHL arenas. Here we go, Faker Authentic. Number one, the St. Louis Blues are going to be the 2019 Stanley Cup champions. Sean, Faker Authentic. Considering the fact the Blues lost game one during the time in which this podcast was recorded, and still going to stay authentic, I think St. Louis will finally get the number one cup. They've been waiting, what is it now, 52 years for, give or take. I want them to get it. I mean, I don't particularly mind as much as I should if the Bruins win, you know, whatever. But St. Louis winning would be a big deal because I think that means that every team in the expansion that, from 1967 that's still around today has a cup, and that's huge. All right, Beepo, fake or authentic? I was going to say fake because I'm a jinx, but then I remembered that I actually, uh, at least in my second chance bracket, I picked the Blues to go all the way to the final and win the cup, so I'm going to say authentic because so far my predictions have gone true. So let's keep that going. Perfect. All right, fake or authentic, number two. The team that wins the Stanley Cup this year will win it at home. Sean, fake or authentic? Considering the fact that this almost never happens, at least in memory, I'm going to say fake. I don't know why. <laughs> you don't know. They're just ended there. I don't know why. All right. I, why is because of the way that it works is that it's like you got two home games back to back, right? It's a two home series, I guess, mini series, the two straight home games back to back for each team, right? And you think about it like this, is that if you have like a motivated team that's down 3-1 after 4, and they got the game on the road, they can be motivate themselves not to win it, but they'll tire themselves out in the process and lose game 6. That's my theory anyways. All right, Beepo, fake or authentic, whoever wins the cup this year is going to win it at home. 
I'm going to use my answer to the previous question uh, as my basis for this one and say fake because statistically the Blues have less of a chance to win it at home than they do to win it on the road because after games one through four, which at this point the Blues cannot win it in four, ah, that's right. The Penguins can't get uh, quadruple swept, I just realized, now that the Bruins have taken game one. The prophecy is incomplete. That's unfortunate. Anyways, um, the, now uh, uh, the Blues cannot win it in four games, so they either would have to win it in five, six, or seven. Five and seven are in Boston. Six is in St. Louis. Two out of three chance them to win it on the road. Statistically, they have a better chance to win on the road. Therefore, fake. That's a sound, logical thinking there. Way to go, people. Uh, fake or authentic? Oh, this is a good one. I like this one. Fake or authentic? Root beer beats cream soda 10 out of 10 times. Sean. Root beer beats cream soda. Beer beating cream soda? Like, come on, it's not even a contest. Of course it's authentic. The only thing that beats root beer is Dr. Pepper. We've been over this before. So maybe I should put root beer and Dr. Pepper in an upcoming throwback throwdown. Uh, and we can and we can discuss the pros and cons of root beer and, Do- and Dr. Pepper. Cons of Dr. Pepper. On the one hand, I find Dr. Pepper is a nice after dinner taste, but on the other hand, <laughs> likes pina coladas and long walks on the beach. <laughs> Beepo, fake or authentic root beer beats cream soda ten out of ten times. I'm going to say fake on this one, mainly just due to the wording of the question. I'd probably give root beer over cream soda maybe eight or nine times out of ten because I also like cream soda, and I have picked it over root beer before just because of uh, crazing cravings at the time. If the question was instead just root beer is better than cream soda, then authentic. But getting uh, technical into the wording of the question, as I do, because that's just my personality, I'm going to say fake because root beer beats cream soda eight or nine times out of ten. Beepo going to the scorecard. Not a bad choice there. Not a bad choice. Our final fake or authentic. Fake or authentic. I will make an effort to watch every game of the 2019 Stanley Cup final. Sean, fake or authentic? That's fake because I missed the first one. I'm in the same boat. I, I was preparing for the podcast and I completely missed game one. Uh, Beepo, fake or authentic? Uh, fake if it comes down to intently watching the entire game. Uh, authentic if it comes down to having it on in the background if I have something else going on. Because more than likely, I'll be getting off of work before the beginning of all of these games, hopefully. Uh, so I won't be missing any of them due to work. But especially towards the end of the series, I'm going to try and tune in and watch more of them, especially at the end of those games, just you know to see, let's say... Uh, like game five or game six, games, game seven, obviously. Those elimination games are possible elimination games. I want to see the end of those no matter who wins them. Uh, so I'll definitely try to tune into those ones. Hopefully I don't fall asleep. Uh, but And not because of boring hockey, but because my work schedule has seen me at this time of night. Um, also possibly, or also because I have uh, terrible self-discipline and sleeping habits. But... You know, I'm definitely going to make an effort to at least have the game on, whether I'm intently watching it or not, the whole series. That's what being young is about, bad sleep patterns, man. Get, enjoy it now. Because when, when you get to, well, at least me, I got to mid-30s, and all of a sudden it's like 9.30 hits, and it feels late. Like, oh, man, I really should get to bed. Because I love sleep so much. I really love sleep so much. If I'm if I'm not getting a lot of it, I really feel like I'm ripping myself off. I love sleep, but I still have terrible sleeping habits. Like, I can't wait until next year. I'm going to be living on campus, which means I'm not going to have to drive to school every day, which means getting enough sleep to be conscious enough to drive is not going to be as important. And therefore, I'll probably have many nights where I get one or two hours of sleep because I'm an idiot with terrible self-discipline. <laughs> so that's going to be fun. All right, it's now time for the new version of Throwback Throwdown. We're still taking two throwback jerseys and pitting them against each other. But the winner of the Throwback Throwdown moves on to next week to take on a new challenger. And we'll just keep going like that. And eventually we'll get to the point where we probably find a jersey that uh, is almost unbeatable. So if it has a streak of five to ten wins or something like that, we'll have to throw it in the the jersey hall of fame so let's get to this week's 
Throwback Throwdown. This week's Throwback Throwdown, we're sticking with our Stanley Cup Final theme, and so we're going to be looking at the 1970 Stanley Cup Final between the Boston Bruins and the St. Louis Blues, and specifically, we're going to be looking at Boston's black home jersey and St. Louis's white road jersey. This was discussed in our previous segment, but let's go over them again. Boston has a black jersey. This logo was the yellow B with the black spokes. And the yellow circle around, or guess I guess you could call it gold. Boston probably calls it gold. So we have the gold shoulder yokes with the thick white line underneath, a gold collar, tie-up lace. Uh, the arm stripes and hem stripes are a thin white line with an even thinner black outline and then a big, thick gold outline. Interestingly enough, uh, Boston would wear white socks with this uniform. If we're looking at the Blues uniform, again, white jersey, as I mentioned, classic Blues logo on the front. The arm and hem striping is a blue stripe outlined in gold and then outlined in a very thin blue. The shoulder yokes are very interesting here. We have a blue stripe outlined in white. And then underneath that, we have a gold stripe outlined thinly in blue with a blue crew neck collar. So, Sean, let's start with Boston, and uh, we kind of covered it before, but a brief review of this jersey. You know, I think that when you get down to brass tacks on this jersey, the black one, I think it's just more iconic. It's nicer. Uh, I think the, the, the crack bear, the concerned bear, the whatever bear, he's happier on there. I think that the yellow and black pops a lot more with these ones. And I think it's one of the few jerseys that the Bruins had that yellow socks actually worked on. But they were, you're, are you talking about 1970? They wore white socks. I know. I'm saying that yellow socks would have worked. Oh, okay. I, I thought you just fully went off the board and reviewed like an 80s jersey there. But that that's cool. That's cool. Uh, Beepo, your thoughts on the 1970 Boston Bruins black jersey? Okay, wait. On initialuniforms.com, looking at 1970, the Bruins have yellow socks with that jersey. Am Dude, I missing something? Okay, I must be mixing up. Okay, so there must have been a change between 69 and 70. 69, they were wearing white socks, and I guess by 70, they had changed to yellow socks. So I missed that change. Beepo coming in with the save. And recognizing the yellow socks. Way to go. Okay, I'm just making sure I'm not looking at the wrong thing. Well, I'm trusting you that you're giving me quality information here. And I'm trusting NHLuniforms.com that they're giving me quality information here. So That's a a good site to trust. (laughs) It is a good site to trust. Um, But anyways, yeah, we talked about this one basically exactly the same already in the uh, the other segment. I'm sorry, I'm a little bit off today, if you guys couldn't tell, because, again, I'm exhausted because I have terrible sleep schedule and I work. Um, you should have heard the us trying to start recording the podcast. <laughs> but <laughs> anyways, as I said with this one before, I love this one. I love the inverted logo. I think the yoke is perfect with the uh, balancing out the colors with the thickness of the stripes. And I got to agree with Sean that I think the yellow socks work well on this one, especially because it's the striping on that sock is consistent with the striping inside of the yellow on the arm and hems, and it works perfectly. Beautiful jersey. I think it should be noted that this Boston jersey is probably uh, involved in the most famous hockey photograph of all time, which is the the Bobby Orr Stanley Cup game-winning goal from 1970. Bobby Orr, behind the net to Sanderson, Orr! That alone just makes it extremely classic. Um, although I, I'm not blown away by it. I know a lot of people are. It's it's just got uh, a, a fond place in a lot of people's hearts. Uh, but again, I think the current Bruins jersey is miles better than this. Uh, not bad, but um, you know, just a very uh, middle of the road rating for me. Let's move on to St. Louis. I love this jersey. I'm rating it very high. 
Uh, again, I love how the yokes and the arms are different, but they completely work for this jersey. The classic Blues logo is the best logo, uh, primary logo, for the Blues. And I'm just even going to go ahead and pick St. Louis for this throwback throwdown. Sean, your thoughts? You know what? Screw it. I'm going to just say the same thing you said. And, you know, St. Louis wins. They get my vote. I really like St. Louis' jerseys here. I think the biggest thing about them by far is the fact that without these jerseys, we wouldn't have the shoulder yoke striping that St. Louis is so well known for today. This is where it began more than anywhere else. Beepo, your thoughts on uh, the St. Louis jersey and your throwback throwdown winner? Well, as I again kind of talked about in the previous segment, I like this jersey, but I don't love it, and I don't necessarily love the yoke either. I think it just makes things a little bit too busy. Uh, It's still a nice jersey either way, but I think making it a plain blue yoke would go a long way. And not that it matters anymore, but this one uh, for me goes to Boston, but St. Louis already wins, so it doesn't really matter, does it? St. Louis does win two to one, and St. Louis. I will... hope that uh, this is the reflection of how the Stanley Cup final goes. Yes, uh, absolutely. Not, not my pick, but I'm going to be unbiased here. I want St. Louis to win the Cup final, but my unbiased pick is that I like the Bruins jersey better. But hopefully, the actual result of this is how the Cup final goes. All right, perfect. So St. Louis, their 1970 jersey does move on next week to Throwback Throwdown. And if you have an idea on who should take on this St. Louis Blues jersey. You can let us know. Let us know the jersey. Uh, let us know home and road jersey. And, of course, let us know the year and the team. And you can do that via Twitter, at HockeyJC. Or you can uh, email us, jerseynerdspodcast at gmail.com. And let us know who should take on this St. Louis Blues jersey next week in Throwback Throwdown. Uh, coming soon, we're going to, as I mentioned last week, we're going to do the HJC mailbag, but we're going to do a voicemail edition. So that'll be coming up. I know I'm traveling in a couple weeks. I don't know if we'll be able to do a podcast during that time. So we might collect some messages and uh, and have it going once I get back from traveling. So we'll get that up and running and be on the lookout uh, on HockeyJerseyConcepts.com or on an, uh, our Twitter feed for when uh, that information comes out. Uh, as I mentioned, we want your throwback throwdown uh, competitor ideas. Who's going to take down this St. Louis Blues jersey? That is all we have for you this week. Be sure to subscribe to the Jersey Nerds podcast to be updated when a new episode comes out every Wednesday. Thanks to Sean and Beepo for joining me and to you, all the Jersey Nerds, for listening. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>